Yeah, I tell everyone I meet in my life about AMS. Everywhere I go, I'm like, oh my gosh, I went to this great school. Anyone I meet who's like my age and is interested in teaching, I'm like, oh, you, you're interested in teaching? How about middle school? If you're interested in a private school, there's this great school in the woods. It's wonderful. You should go teach there. And anyone I know with you know, my age, student kids, I'm always like, so I know it's weird. I know it's scary to think of sending your 12-year-old off to a boarding school, but there's this brilliant school that I went to, um, and I loved it, and it was the greatest experience of my life. Well, it's known as cutting edge because uh, right now one of the greatest interests among Montessori teachers is extending the experience into the middle school years, and Montessori had a particular vision uh, for children of all ages, which was to provide them with the education that was developmentally appropriate for them. In the middle school years, there's very little in our educational system that does that. So Montessori's vision for those middle school years was children are growing and expanding physically, intellectually, imaginatively, emotionally, and it's a time of their life when they need a large arena in which to express themselves and explore themselves. So her, idea was a, her ideal was a farm school where children could have meaningful work, grow things that would have a market in the world and um, actually feel themselves to be moving into adulthood. I feel like I'm learning in some ways more what I need for life from AMS than from a public school. Because AMS, you know, it teaches academics too, but it teaches more than academics, which is pretty much all a public school teaches. It teaches it teaches um, how to live in a community, a close tight community. It teaches if you've never had siblings, how to deal with siblings or how to have a roommate and how to work out boundaries. You know, it cultures your interest. It, you know, gives you a natural playground. It teaches you gardening. It teaches you, you know, just all these things that you can't get from a normal public school or private school. And learning math in particular so many students say, why am I learning this? This doesn't matter. This isn't important. But when you start looking at things in the context of the world, you start actually maybe enjoying math and loving math. Um, and certainly when you get into the real world, questions don't come at you simply, like in a math textbook or in any textbook. They're not simple. They've got all these little weird technicalities and things that you have to work out. And at AMS, especially with things like field trips, where you're working out all the fine details, you get experience in how to, this is a scenario in the real world, and then breaking that down and saying, these are the problems that I have, and, and breaking them into steps so that you can solve each of those problems individually instead of already having you know, the package problem to solve. What I think works so well with this age group is that um, although the academics are part of everyday um, experience here, they are a very integrated part. And I think that that's really the only way that you get anything into this age group's brain. They, they're so social, they're so into the experience of these changing bodies and this growing mind, and um, it has to be integrated, otherwise it just, just flies away. When these kids go to take like the SAT or their end of grade test and there's going to be a question about simple machines, most kids, they learn about simple machines, they're sitting in a classroom. When I went to AMS, I learned about simple machines by moving logs in the woods. And now I remember about simple machines because I learned by doing it. Man, I really liked this project because it was just a chance to, first of all, this class was um, it was a class that you could actually be counted in high school as a civics class. 
I got really interested in researching just about the country. I learned a lot more about laws that have put in place, laws that have expired, different presidents we've had. And it's really been interesting to learn something that actually like really relates to the country that I live in and just to research so much stuff that you know, if we were actually president, what we could do, what we could change, what we could make better. It was a real cool project because we just learned so much about everything that was real. The student to staff ratio is obviously a huge benefit and because of that the teachers can actually focus on each student independently and help them learn about their own learning styles and so one of the greatest things I learned from AMS was how I, as an individual, learn. And so then when I got to high school and then again in college, I could really understand what I needed to do to study. Coming from teaching public schools, uh, I really find AMS liberating because the students uh, interact much more and we have smaller classes, which allows me to interact with students much more. And we can have a better relationship both as uh, as people, as teacher to student, and we can have a better relationship with the material. To create lifelong learners, I think what we need to do first of all is uh, make sure the kids are interested in learning. And in order to be interested in it, they have to have a good time doing it, and they also have to learn. And one of the things that really empowers this school is that we really, really try to engage students' interests and guide that in a constructive way that will then facilitate further interest in something else and hopefully open them up to other avenues of learning. One of the problems that we've been working on this past week is looking at some equations that actually solve how long your bones are if you know how tall you are. And one of the students back here, a lot of the students drew themselves, traced themselves on paper and then took the inches, uh, this girl, Mahela, was five feet, five inches tall, converted that to centimeters, and came up with, she's 163 centimeters tall. So from that, um, we used some equations that forensic scientists developed, and you can figure out how long your tibia, your femur, your radius, and your humerus bones are by knowing how tall you are. Just doing the artistic you know, part of it was really fun for a lot of them and took them out of that fear of I don't know how into I can display how I do my work. What, what I really have been impressed with is that she was a person that came here without a love of math at all. She didn't think she could do math. She didn't like math. Um, I have seen a huge change in that. She now feels as though she can do math. She has a better attitude about it. I think she sees it more as a game. And it was so helpful to her to not have this punitive, um, you're not able to do this, therefore you fail. Basically, she was able to go back and work through the problems until she understood them. And now she has this tremendous base for math that I know she wouldn't have gotten in the public school. She wasn't getting in the public school. We had to use tutors just so that she could keep up.